Hey everyone, John Batdorf here, and today I'm really excited to show you Nick's new software, HDRFX Pro 2. Um, this just came out of beta, and they've done a, a wonderful job of revamping their HDR product. And I'm excited about it because I was part of the beta group of photographers that was giving feedback on what they'd like to see with this, and I think they did a really nice job listening to us. And the other part of this is, I think this is going to really satisfy two different camps of people. Those that want a realistic image but want to utilize the HDR range um, to their advantage and those that uh, want a very artistic looking HDR image. And like I said, they did a really nice job giving us controls to, to create images that I think that will satisfy both camps. Now this image um, is kind of a worst case shot. I mean, I, I shot this from the London Eye. I'm moving. I'm shooting through plexiglass. And I guess my thinking is if it can handle this image uh, and really create something, you know, interesting, uh, then it probably can handle one that's, you know, shot technically correct. But anyway, let's let's take a look at this. Um, you can see the details pretty good uh, here. So the image is in pretty good shape. I did, had to do a little bit of cleanup because I did shoot it in uh, through a plexiglass or the few spots I had to remove prior to importing in here. But... Let's, let's proceed on. I'm going to close out the loop view here, and let's take a look at all these presets. There's 28 of them. They're broken down by category, but we'll just peruse them real quickly here. Some really cool ones. The Deep uh, 2 and uh, is really cool. Um, I like the bright, especially with an image like this that's, you know, it's a little dark. And they have black and white, as you can see and the more traditional looking HDR, the Structurized 2. And then just some really cool presets, 28 of them. Um, you can create your own presets, of course, or you can import, create, uh, import other people's presets. So I'm going to start out, I think, right around here, Deep 2. Uh, that kind of creates an interesting shot. Um, you can hit Compare to see where we were at. Anytime along the way we make any adjustments, you can always go back to the history and go back. Here is our default spot. Here's where we're at right now. And I'm going to close this out, this left pane out, so we can just focus on the image. And let's start at tone compression. Now, this preset has set all these, uh, all these settings over here. So we can adjust them. Now, tone compression, as we move it to the left, it's going to look a little bit more like the original image. I'm going to be somewhere probably right around in there. And then method strength, we can increase it or decrease. And I'm probably going to decrease it a little bit. And then HDR method. So we're on right now, this is the depth, right? It's pretty much off. Subtle, normal, and then strong. I think I'm going to be right at normal. And then detail. So we're at realistic. They're soft, realistic. Accentuated, detailed, kind of that traditional HDR look, and then grungy. And I think I'm going to be right here at realistic. And then drama, it's flat, natural, deep, dingy. And as we move to the right, it's more of those traditional HDR uh, looks, if you will. So I think I'm going to be right in here at natural. So that's kind of a rundown real quick on the tone compression. Um, tonality allows us to change this exposure. So if we want to brighten it up a little bit, we go to the right. I think that looks a little better. We can go darken it there. So I'll brighten it up a little bit. We can work the shadows and highlights, the contrast, the black and white points, back up the blacks a little bit, and then of course a structure slider. Now, it, watch how we move this to the right. It just makes the image pop. There's structure slider is my favorite tool. Um, one thing, a word of caution I would say is that if you have any noise in your sky or anything like that, you'd want to address that maybe using Define to eliminate because if there's, what Structure does is it brings out the detail. So if there's any details which noise would create in the sky, it's going to make them more apparent. So you'd want to run some sort of noise reduction ahead of time before doing this. But I'll probably be right around there. So those are our tonality controls real quickly. And then color, and this is cool. So we can change the saturation, of course, bump it up. Go all the way to the right. 
you know, then it looks more like a true HDR. Or I even have been doing a little desaturating my images a little bit, give them kind of that timeless feel, um, a little darker. And then we can change the temperature. Let's say we want to warm it up. Or in this case, I'm going to cool this image down a little bit. Just right there. I like that feel. And then we can change the tint. So the color controls are really nice, uh, especially with the dynamic range, just what you can do with them. Um, I, I really appreciate it as a photographer. And then selective adjustments. I think the true beauty behind Nick's software are the control points. And so let's say I, I'm going to click on a control point. We'll put it back here um, because this is a sunset. And maybe I want to increase the saturation there a little bit. Maybe I want to change the temperature and warm it up, or the uh, temperature right there and warm it up a little bit. See that? Right around there. And that just warmed up this background. Let's do a quick compare again. That's where we were. Look where we are right now. I think pretty decent. Let's take the boat here. i pop one right here. We'll use the loop view so we can see what we're targeting. Select it again. I'm going to put it on the white right there. And then I'm going to increase the weight a little bit, just make it pop a little bit, and maybe the exposure a little bit, just make that boat a little more obvious. And so you can use the control points throughout the image to really tailor this to your artistic eye, I guess. And so let's close out of this and go to finishing. Now, one of the tools that I know you're going to want to use, it's my favorite, especially as a landscape photographer, are the graduated neutral density um, filters. Now, so watch this. And I know I skipped over vignettes. These are pretty obvious. The adjustments you can make. Uh, very nice, but this to me is really the money. So let's say I want to darken the sky. Look at that. That is so nice. And then let's say I want to lighten this up down here, the lower tonality. See that? Or maybe I want to darken it. Kind of a darker image there. Very The control you have with the graduated neutral density filters are really nice. And we can change the blend, the shift, um, and the rotation. And something that I didn't use a lot before with uh, Nick were their levels and curves uh, in the HDR product. And they've really done a nice job here. So we're at neutral right now. And we can go to fill minus one. And as you go through these, that's pretty cool. And so these are really nice. Um, and I've actually used this film uh, uh, plus one here quite a bit. It creates a really nice looking image, very natural looking image, if you will. So we'll go back to neutral here. Now you'll notice it kind of zeroed things out. Uh, we can go back to our history and just stop back to where we were at. And that's where we were at. Let me close that out again. So that's kind of a quick rundown. Now, I finished this image a little differently, but I just want to give you folks a real quick rundown on the tools available to you in, in the software. And like I said, I think they did a really nice job of meeting the needs of two different camps, those that want to use HDR to create a very realistic image, those maybe that want to create a very true HDR grungy image, and of course there's going to be people in between based on your personal taste. But here's where we were before, relatively flat, you know, composition's fine, but relatively flat, nothing going on, to boom, very dynamic. Um, like I said, I think they did a very nice job uh, with the software. It really meets the needs for me as a photographer, and I think it's going to allow me to elevate my work to the next level. And I, I, frankly, I just think they did a good job of listening to other photographers and their, and their needs and wants and, and bring that to the table. So if you have any questions about the software or any Nick products, feel free to give me an email at john at Thank you.